Well, meanwhile, Ukraine's parliament has passed a new law making it easier to call up new recruits. It requires all men aged between 18 and 60 to carry documents showing that they've registered with the military. The law also provides soldiers with incentives like cash bonuses or money towards the cost of a house or car. And new troops are desperately needed. Ahead of the vote in parliament, a general told lawmakers that Ukrainian soldiers are outnumbered 10 to 1 in places. But there was bad news for serving troops. Parliamentarians had dropped a clause from the law that would have placed time limits on their service. Earlier versions allowed for demobilization after three years. The omission is a bitter blow for battle-weary troops, some of whom have been fighting since the war began. We're at a training ground near Kyiv. In just a few weeks' time, these soldiers will head back to the front lines, where they've been since Russia invaded two years ago. Last year, I got five days off. Lots of guys in my unit have families who've gone abroad. Some have even become grandfathers and have never met their grandkids. Perhaps they never will. This isn't Alexander's first experience of war. He served in the army after 2014 when Ukraine was fighting Russian-backed separatists in Donbass. He left in 2020 to start a business and a family. His wife and his three-year-old daughter have barely seen him since he went back to his unit after the full-scale invasion. If you were told you'd be serving until 2025, you'd know that if you survive, you'd be going home. If people can't make plans, they get depressed, and then they start making mistakes. Alexander tells us it's not a question of wanting to leave straight away. It's about feeling some kind of control, being able to plan your life. That, he's convinced, would boost morale. Demobilisation after 18 months on the front lines, or a total of 36 months service, were both discussed when this law made its way through Parliament. It was central to the rationale for the new law, calling up new soldiers to give veterans a chance to recover. In the end, any mention of demobilisation was dropped, with little prior warning. Only returning prisoners of war get an exception. Russia is preparing to mobilise at least 300,000 men over the next six weeks. That's in addition to 150,000 doing their military service. There could be another wave of mobilisation in the autumn. In this situation, demobilising experienced soldiers would be suicidal. These soldiers' wives and mothers protesting near Parliament don't expect their husbands to come home right away. What they want is clarity. Our husbands are being punished for their patriotism, for volunteering to fight. When the war started, my husband told me, I can't just sit around. I have to serve. Someone needs to defend this country. If I don't go, who will? My husband's exhausted. He's only 29 and he's already gone grey. For now, no one in Ukraine's military or politics wants to make promises to these families that they know they'll most likely have to break. What they can do is make sure it's not just those who volunteered in the early days of the war that are left defending Ukraine's front lines.